Oftentimes we hear these things, you know, you might hear, oh, well, this has the best schools or, you know, they have low crime in these areas. But is it the right community for you? You know, are you comfortable in these communities? Um, Maybe you're more comfortable where your family has grown up. You know, if it's a neighborhood that you know that is familiar to you, then that might be considered a great community to you. Even if the schools aren't as great, even if crime is a little bit higher there, you might feel more comfortable there. Hello and welcome to the Homeowner Prep Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Alon, and this podcast was created to provide real-world advice and accountability for first-time homebuyers. We'll be interviewing industry experts, providing some how-tos, and talking with first-time homebuyers about their personal experiences. If that sounds interesting to you, please be sure to subscribe, and if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the little bell to be notified when new episodes release. Now let's dive into today's episode. Hello and welcome to the Homeowner Prep Podcast. You know, today we're actually going to be discussing how to find a great neighborhood um, and a great community. You know, when you're looking for a home, you got to think long term. Uh, even if you're only planning to live in the home for a couple of years, you still want to buy a home in a great community, in a great neighborhood um, with some great neighbors. You know, and as an asset, you want to make sure that you're going to be set up in the long run for your home to appreciate. So today I'm going to give a few pointers as to how you can find a great neighborhood uh, for your first home. The first thing I want to talk about is actually diving into what your neighborhood looks like now, you know, get an idea of where you're already living. You know, oftentimes people will say, oh, well, I want to move to this neighborhood because it's got better schools. It's got this, it's got low crime. Well, what does crime look like in your neighborhood? You know, what do the schools look like where you're already living? You know, is it a place where you want to stay? You know, oftentimes it might be easier for you to just find a place where you're already familiar. You know, most people want to stay, you know, especially if you've been there for years that, you know, I'm comfortable here. I I know this community. I know the neighbors. um, You know, I know how to get to and from work, things of that nature. And so just get an idea of some of the basics of your current neighborhood. You know, what makes your neighborhood great? Because sometimes it might be better for you to stay in the community you're already in than to go and find another community. You know, the saying is, you know, the grass is not always greener on the other side, right? So you want to make sure that you just get an understanding of your current neighborhood. See if it's a place that you want to live in long term. And if so, you know, then we find out, okay, well, what are home prices like? What are schools like? What's the crime rates like? You know, things of that nature. So you can really dive into where you're already at. We're going to dive into some of those as we, you know, talk about some of the crime stats, Um, of different communities because you're going to want to know that information as well. You know, as a first time home buyer, you're going to want to understand, hey, what's going on in this community? I know that you're going to reach out to your agent and use your agent as a resource and an asset in this process. But as an agent, we're actually um, told and we're advised not to dive into crime statistics Um, sexual predator lists and things of that nature, because as an agent, we have to disclose everything that we know about a particular property or community or neighborhood. And so if we were to dive into those numbers, every time we sold a home in a particular neighborhood or particular street, we'd have to disclose that information. So oftentimes agents and brokers are advised not to look at these lists. So you will be responsible to look at crime statistics, sexual predator lists and things of that nature that are going on in your community, your neighborhood. Um, Sometimes your state will have these lists. And so you can find out what's going on and who the neighbors are. Um, And it's important for you to know that, you know, because the the next buyer for your home could be looking at those lists themselves and then try to figure out if it's a place that they want to live. So you want to know that going in. Again, when you're buying a home, it's a long-term investment. And so you want to know as much information, not only about the home, but about the neighborhood, the community and the neighbors as well. So think about that as you're going through your research. The next point is actually your school ratings. So school ratings are very important. You may think, well, I'm not really concerned about schools because I don't have any kids. Um, And you should still be concerned about school ratings because people who are moving into your neighborhood will look at this information. And so you want to know, hey, are schools in this area doing well? You know, are they well funded? Um, Are they dilapidated? You know, they they need a lot of repairs, you know, because you want to understand that, hey, if there's great schools, then typically you have great property values and appreciating values um, because people will always want to move into those communities. If the scores are performing poorly, 
then you'll want to know that because you're going to say, well, hey, if the schools are continuing to go down, people are going to pull their kids from these schools, take them to private school or take them somewhere else. And they're going to then kind of pull their tax money. There's not a lot of tax money going to these schools because schools are paid per, per child, basically. And so, you know, you want to know that you don't want schools to close down in your community and things of that nature. You know, so you want to look at schools, even if you don't have kids, because keep in mind that any future buyers, when you go to sell your property or even to rent it out, um, they may look at school ratings and that might be a judgment call for them to say if they actually want to move into the community and want to buy your home. So, you know, definitely, you know, get an understanding of the school ratings, what's going on with schools, um, repairs, drive around those schools, look at them, you know, see if they're they're well taken care of, because that will have an impact on your property values down the road. The next point I want to make is getting an understanding of what is a great community to you. Uh, you know, oftentimes we hear these things, you know, you might hear, oh, well, this has the best schools or, you know, they have low crime in these areas. But is it the right community for you? You know, are you comfortable in these communities? Um, maybe you're more comfortable where your family has grown up. You know, if it's a neighborhood that you know that is familiar to you, then that might be considered a great community to you. Even if the schools aren't as great, even if crime is a little bit higher there, you might feel more comfortable there. And it's important that you have that comfortability. You, the last thing you want to do is move into a community where you feel like the, the outcasts or you don't get along with neighbors um, because that can be a nightmare. <laughs> and you want to really understand that, hey, I live in this community. I'm a part of this community and I've been here for years. It might be the right community for you. Um, and, and you won't even have to consider all those other factors. And so, again, comfortability is important. So you would have to then have to weigh okay, our home prices going up, is this appreciating area? Or am I more comfortable and I'm okay staying here for 20, 30 years and I'm not planning to sell my place? You know, so you have to make that decision, but ultimately you have to define what is a great community to you. Um, again, don't take, you know, the outside influences of all these different factors and say, well, this is what makes a great community. And then you move into that community and you're uncomfortable um, and, and you, you never really build relationship and rapport with other folks in that neighborhood. So that, that may play a major part in your decision of deciding if it's a great community or not. As I say that, you should still ask around, <laughs> you know, yes, define the community for you, but still ask around if you're looking at different communities and neighborhoods and you're, you want to get out and talk to folks, see what's going on in the area. Um, you may want to talk to the neighbors. I know that's like, <laughs> you know, the at, at 1970s and 80s thing, but talk to the neighbors, you know, don't just, you know, as you, whatever community you're in, you know, don't just drive into the garage and, and drive out, you know, talk to folks, find out what's going on in the area, find out how long they've been in the area. They may have some great insight as to what makes a great community or not. You know, what, where are the problems at in the, in the neighborhood? You know, um, who's renting, who's, who's owning oftentimes, you know, renters are seen as I, they're not going to take care of the property or they're kind of in and out more so than homeowners. So if there's a lot of homeowners on your street, it can make a big difference. And you might be in a neighborhood that some may say, well, you know, it's not really the best neighborhood, but your street is, is a great street to be on. You know, there's no crime. There's a lot of homeowners that you look at the yards and everybody's taking care of their yards and their homes and things of that nature. And so you may be on the best street in the neighborhood. So having conversations by asking around, talking with neighbors is going to be a great resource for you. And then reach out to your social circle, you know, and find out if anybody lives in that area, if they have any family that lives in that area, what they know about it. And just take that with a grain of salt, you know, and understand that, uh, you know, again, great communities are defined differently for folks, but just get some insight as to, you know, what they might know about a particular neighborhood and it might help you in your search. So definitely think about that. One of the things you can also do is drive the community um, day and night. You know, oftentimes when you go and look at homes and you're in the process of buying your first place, you might go and see the, the property during the day. You know, you want to have sunlight, you want to be able to see the place, um, you know, walk around and things of that nature. But you can go back without your agent or with your agent and drive around the neighborhood at night. You know, look around, see if there's a lot of people hanging out, there's a lot of loud music, if there's 
things like that that might drive your decision to determine if it's a great neighborhood for you. Um, and so I would say visit the neighborhood, visit the street, visit the home day and night, you know, and just see what the differences are. See if it's fairly quiet. See if there's a loud barking dog next door to the home that you're going to buy, <laughs> you know, things of that nature, because you're going to want to know that before you sign on that dotted line and the home is yours. So drive the neighborhood night and day. Look around for tall tale signs Are you know, is there graffiti? Um, you know, do you see any crime taking place you know, day or night? Um, are there bars on windows, you know, things of that nature and just get a full understanding and scope of that neighborhood. And the only way to do that is to visit both day and night. The last thing I would say is something that, um, has happened to me in my career. You know, I've actually talked to some of the police officers as you're in the neighborhood and you might see a, a police cruiser, things of that nature, you know, ask a, a police officer who's on that beat, you know, somebody who's familiar with the neighborhood and the crime. Um, because you might get some insight as to exactly what crimes are happening, you know, and is there a spike in crime or is crime decreasing? Is the neighborhood kind of going through a revitalization? Um, you can get a lot of that insight from police who walk that beat or drive that beat every day. Um, and I've actually, you know, been out showing a home with a client and I had a police officer tell me, hey, you know, I wouldn't bring any clients into this neighborhood, <laughs> you know. Um, and so he gave me some good insight. Not only that, but just kind of gave me the reasons why. And getting that information was vital. And I shared that with my client. That way they can make an informed decision. Now they may hear that, be comfortable with the neighborhood and know all about what's going on in the area and be perfectly fine with that. As an agent, we have to kind of pull ourselves back out of that decision, but we're there to provide you with the information that we've received and let you make that decision yourself. So definitely talk to police who, you know, work that area and reach out to your network, find out who's in the area, who knows family that lives in the area, things of that nature. That'll really, really help you get some insight, especially if it's people that you're familiar with, people who have, you know, they have a certain expectation and lifestyle that you have, um, then it'll help you really understand that community from their point of view. That's all I have for you today. I just wanted to drop a few points that'll help you decide, you know, how do you find a great neighborhood? And sometimes I put that in you know, air quotes, because it's different for everybody, you know, and that's understandable. But again, you want to define it for yourself. You want to ask around, see, you know, what people are saying, check the crime statistics, sexual predators list, school ratings, things of that nature. Ultimately, a great community is going to be defined by you, where you can be, where you see yourself, where you're comfortable. And so if you want to reach out and um, ask us additional questions about how to find these communities, or if you want to be connected to an agent who works in your area that can provide additional information and insight for you, would love to connect you. So feel free to reach out to us. You can always reach us on Instagram at homeowner prep and ask your questions, you know, um, and we'd love to connect you with somebody who's in your neighborhood who knows this information that can help you out and help you make that decision. I hope you got some great insight from today's episode. I look forward to providing some great information on the next episode. I hope that you would share this episode with all your friends, family, and I hopefully it help you make some decisions as to where you want to be and where you want to find your first home. I hope that information is vital to you and helps you in your decision making. Until next time, have a blessed day. I hope you got some value from today's episode. If you know someone who could benefit from hearing this show, be sure to share it with them. And if you're listening to the podcast, we'd love for you to drop us a review. We'd also love to hear from you if you have any questions. So reach out to us on Instagram at homeowner prep. Who knows? We may read your review and answer your question on one of our future shows.